This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. It is homecoming week, so lots of festivities uh, this week. Nice. Yeah. Uh, big parade on, on Friday. That'll be at 6 o'clock going down Broadway. Okay. Then they'll have a pep rally and bonfire on uh, Friday night at 7.30 at Urban- Urbanowski Park, which is over there uh, just to the uh, east of the arena in that grassy green area there uh, right across the street from uh, the dorms. Right there, so be looking for be looking for that, and then oh by the way, the game itself is uh, set for three o'clock on Saturday. Okay, good Texas, news. Texas Tech takes on Baylor. Baylor was also off this past weekend. Uh, we get this little prognostication from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Don't forget your rain gear on Saturday. And I quick went to the little weather outlook uh, on my phone, and apparently thirty eight percent on Friday. And 58% on Saturday, but significantly cooler for this game than we've had for the other games. Looks like a high on Saturday right now, 71 degrees. I'll okay. take the 71. I'll, I'll pass on the rain. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, maybe some tea storms too. So we've got to push that out of the area so we don't have any extended uh, delays. Uh, this from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. You can chime in too. Go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app for that. I'd love to see both uh, Braylon Lux and Chapman Lewis on the field Saturday. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, Coach McGuire would as well. Uh, Lewis has a high upside at safety. Yes. Yes. Those are two guys that you'd love to have in there, no doubt. Mm-hmm. As much as you mm-hmm. can. Yeah, just uh, that veteran. Those veteran guys mean just mean so much. It, it uh, mm-hmm. feels like it calms things down with the young guys back there. Mm-hmm. And I think Mo Horn's been, been playing pretty well for you too. Yep. Back there, absolutely. You know? So I think he's certainly been been a guy that's been uh, been been nice to have uh, on that defensive side. Uh, this I stayed up and watched Kansas State and Colorado. That game didn't end till one a.m. Man, it's hard to root for Colorado with the zoo that Dion puts on the sideline. Yeah, it's a uh, man Friday night and Saturday night because stayed up to watch Utah and Arizona State. Stayed up to watch Colorado and Kansas State. It would sure be nice if we could get some of these games a little bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as far as Dion Zoo, I kind of yeah, we all know that's kind of part of the deal. Yeah. Uh, Kansas, but he's doing a great job with that football team. Kansas State wins it thirty-one to twenty-eight. Uh, K State um, was ranked eighteenth at the time of that victory. And so they win by three. Um, the other uh, Big Twelve scores: uh, Cincinnati winning at UCF. Did that surprise you? Nineteen to thirteen. Um, did, just really had no idea with that game. Mm-hmm. No idea. I, I mean, what UCF is going through? They've got five or six guys that have, you know, decided they're going to redshirt so they can hit the portal. It's clear that team is has given up, and um, they've changed quarterbacks. They've started their second string guy. Played him for a little bit, moved to their third string guy, and he actually gave him a little bit of life. And uh, I thought he played pretty well, but um, yeah, I just uh, just looks like a team that's not all in right now. Uh, Utah on Friday night, uh, then ranked 16th, lost at Arizona State, 27 to 19. That Arizona State wins looking looking pretty good, isn't it? For the Red Raiders, yeah, yeah, it's it's it is. No, they've won a couple games since you beat them, no doubt. I mean, Utah, Cam Rising was got dinged up early in the game and was. I mean, he just looked horrible. He looked horrible, and you know they're just not the same without him being a healthy quarterback. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they you can see that they had no confidence in going to the backup because Rising couldn't move. Yeah, and they kept him in the game. Is the surprise team in the Big Twelve right now BYU? <laughs> without question. I don't think there's any doubt there. Yeah, I mean, they were picked question. to finish, what, 13, 14, 15, somewhere yeah. in there? I don't yeah. know, and they're undefeated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I thought everybody probably thought Iowa State was going to be good, so maybe they're a little bit better than than uh, we thought. But, uh, yeah, BYU was picked in the last four or five spots. I can't remember where they were picked. I, I but, had that. I'll, I'll get that yeah. for you here in just a second. Um, but, yeah, they, they've uh, 
They've certainly that, I mean, they've powered over Arizona. Yeah, you could say Kansas and Oklahoma State are surprises. Too. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. On the other end, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep, yes, yep. There can be negative surprises. Yes, um, uh, BYU and Oklahoma State uh, will, this Friday will play night. this. Yeah, will play this week. Yeah, Friday night, uh, and then uh, and another late one. Another late at like one. Nine thirty. Yeah. I, I, it's 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 not going anywhere either. Um, yeah, I know. You know You're that's right. the that's the that's the that's the problem is it's not it's not going anywhere. Uh Kansas State is uh, on the road this week at West Virginia. So it's you know, go one go west, now they go east. Um and they go they go out there and win. They're gonna you know, start making a, a push for themselves. I mean they're they're already no question a conference contender, but you you win those two tough road games and then and then after that, it, the schedule gets much easier for them with Kansas at home, at Houston, home against Arizona State and Cincinnati, and then their last game uh, at Iowa State. That, that K-State-Iowa State game on November 30th could be a, a play-in game for the Big 12 Conference Championship game, or it could be a game that could be repeated the next week. Yep. So all, all, all of those things um, being considered as well. Um all right, so what would you think of uh, the top 25 games? What stood out to you uh, this past weekend? Uh, Oregon and Ohio State. Oregon wins at home by, by a point, 32-31, to 31, over the number two Buckeyes. Uh, obviously a really good game there. I, to be honest with you, I watched a ton of Big 12 football and okay. didn't really pay attention too much. I was a little surprised to see Tennessee struggle with Florida. Uh, that was a, a close game and, I mean, obviously overtime game. I didn't watch any of the game that you just mentioned, but clearly a really good football game with mm-hmm. two teams that, I, I mean, I, I don't think, you know, you look at those two teams and I've seen each of them play a little bit this year and I just don't think anybody in the Big 12 has any for, anything for those teams. They got nothing for those teams. I, I think BYU and Iowa State are, are really good teams. I, I think they're the class of our our conference, but I don't think they're beating those teams in the playoffs. Yeah, it's just there's a they're a cut above. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with the Longhorns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're a cut. They're Georgia, cut. Bama. I mean, there's a there's a few of them. But mm-hmm. yeah, we're just we're just. I mean, I think again, I think BYU and Iowa State are really solid. They just don't have any weaknesses. They just look like good, solid football teams. Maybe not extraordinary at anything, but good, solid football teams. I, I just don't think they have the firepower that those teams do. 6.40 this morning on the morning drive. Jeff will have this day in sports history next. We'll have a local winning word for you from Double T 97.3 in the home zone. To uh, qualify, all you have to do is go to Double T 97.3.com after we give you the lucky word, which is... Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Five time for this day in sports history. Today is Monday, October the 14th, 2024. Here is... Jeff McGuire with the Stay in Sports History. I'm going to start in 1961 because winless Texas Tech takes down number 21 TCU mm. 10 to nothing. It's the first of two straight upsets of ranked teams. Nice. So how about that? First two wins of the year being over ranked opponents. That part's good. The part that we were winless before well, that, know. not great, but... I'll take two wins over eight opponents to start a season, eventually. 1965, Baseball World Series, Dodgers edge Minnesota 2-0 in Game 7 at the Metropolitan Stadium. It's the Dodgers' third title since their move to Los Angeles. You guys want to take a guess who the MVP was? Uh, Sandy Koufax? That would be the correct answer, yes. 1973, 42-year-old future baseball Hall of Fame center fielder Willie Mays gets his last career hit. As the Mets beat the A's ten to seven in the World Series Game Two in Oakland, it, it was so sad watching him play then because um, he became kind of the poster child for players that stayed too long. Yeah, H- him and J- him and Johnny Unitas for years were the were the were the poster child of Johnny Unitas criminal. You know, playing for the Chargers and then Joe Namath criminal for playing for the Rams and they, those were guys that you would always go eh, did this stay too stay too long 1978 
James had not runs for 268 yards in the first of two 200-yard efforts of the season as Texas Tech beats New Mexico 36-23. to They had not an answer for him, did they? They did not. <laughs> so that qualifies a bad dad joke there? Uh, it, was, it was good. It was good? It was good. Yeah. It was good. Okay. Mm-hmm. 1989, the Oakland Athletics pitcher Dave Stewart is the first major league pitcher to start consecutive World Series openers since the Cincinnati Reds' Don Gullett in 1976. Kind of surprising. I guess it just really has to do with the fact that you are you don't have that many teams that are repeating as going mm-hmm. because you would think, you know, an ace of a staff, chances are that he's going to be the ace of the staff the next year also. Mm-hmm. And so... Doesn't seem like that, or it seems like that would happen more often. But I guess it just has to do with the fact that there are not a lot of repeat teams going. And there's where are they falling in the rotation versus yeah. what day? I mean, all a mm-hmm. bunch of factors go into it. I think sure. in the case for Gullet, I think his '75 start was with Cincinnati, and then he was a free agent and signed with the Yankees. Well, he 76. was with Cincinnati again in '76. Okay, then I was wrong. Then mm-hmm. okay, uh, 1990, San Francisco 49er Joe Montana passes for six touchdowns. Versus Atlanta, winning 45-35. to 35. I heard he was pretty good. Not bad. Mm-hmm. And in 2003, Cubs fan Steve Bartman deflects a ball away from Chicago Cubs outfielder Moise Salou. The Cubs then forget how to play defense for the next two and a half innings. Cubs give up eight runs in the inning and lose the Marlins 8-3. to three. And the Bartman incident is seen as the turning point in the series, and, along with the three other errors that they committed in the inning. And couldn't that literally have been any of us? Every single one of us. Yep. Every single one yeah. of us. How did you read it? Read your writing again there? What did it say? Uh, which part? Uh, how the Cubs forgot how to play defense? No, 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 no. The first part where you read about how... Fan Steve Bartman deflects the ball away from Cubs outfielder Moises Alou. Deflects it away from him. That insinuates that he reached out... As Moises was camped underneath it and slapped the ball away, he deflected it away from him. Okay, which is not accurate. He was sitting in his stands and the ball was under his seat or whatever. He stood up and the ball was coming to him and he tried to catch it. Now, did Alou have a chance to catch it if Bartman got out of the way? Yes. Okay, and if you're a really good fan and it's your team, you should know to do that. So not saying he's a really good fan, but to, to say that he deflected it away from him is inaccurate. Yeah, it's almost like he was playing defense for the other team. That That's what the, 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 the saying, deflection. wherever Jeff got that from, that's where the writing is inaccurate. Yeah, It was almost as if Alou, you could better say Alou, Alou deflected, deflected away, away from, from him. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well... Maybe this will make you feel better. It's National Dessert Day. Just okay. any of them. Any of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Anything you want to have for dessert. Your choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And seconds could be your dessert. I mean, I'm not going to judge. Uh, happy birthday to Usher, who's 46. Jared Goff is 30. Stephen A. Smith, noted Cowboy fan, 57. Brandon Wheaton, 41. Stacy Keebler is 45. Joe Girardi, 60. And Jerry Glanville is 83. Wow. I didn't realize that Jerry Glanville was still alive. Kind of why I put him in there. Yeah. And the fact that it's his birthday. I I am so tired of the Stephen A. Smith hate for the Cowboys. I mean, it is just so, it's such a joke, man. He doesn't. He loves the Cowboys. Well, he's ragging on them all the time. I don't think he loves them. He does. He takes joy in their failings. Except that he doesn't. He enjoys antagonizing the Cowboy fans. What's the difference? Because if the Cowboys didn't exist, he wouldn't have anything to say. Oh, I think Steve and I would still find things to say. It's I don't know. It's just very unbecoming. Just trolling a fan base. Mm-hmm. It's just a bad look, dude. But that's kind of who Steve and A is. And on this day, one of the last famous first flights happened. I mean, we've got the Wright brothers flying from Kitty Hawk. Sure. We've got the first solo crossing of the Atlantic with Charles mm-hmm. Lindbergh. We've got the first operational fighter jet with the German Messerschmitt ME 262. Is that walking around knowledge for you, the last the last one? Yes. The okay. 262? Yeah, the 262. Yeah, it's the swept wing okay. jet okay. engine in World War II. That I'm, if Germany had actually decided to actually build the thing like they should have, 
and not mess with it the four different times that they did, it might have won the war, air war for them. <clears throat> it's a giant leap in technology. You have proved your point there, Counselor. I, I believe you. Giant leap in technology. But on this day, 1947, a B-29 drops a very odd-looking plane. Orange. Straight wings. The pilot, Chuck Yeager, lights the rockets, breaks the sound barrier. X2. X2 or X1? X1. X1. Okay. And that, this day in sports history. All right, this day in sports history. That means now it's time for our lucky local winning word, your chance to win cash from the home zone, making your house a home at 50th and Indiana, double T 97.3, as we're going to give away cash this week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to someone. And you, all you have to do is uh, pay attention at this time, 845 and 445 in the afternoon, then go to double dot 973com Enter it there for your chance to win weekly cash here on Double T 97.3. This is not a national contest. It's a local one. So the money's given away to somebody stumbled around in town just like you. Our lucky local winning word on this, the 14th day of October 2024, is Orioles. Orioles, as in the Baltimore Orioles, who are on the sideline again this year, sitting and watching. The other birds play O R I O L E S Orioles. The other birds would be the Ravens there in Baltimore, who had a win over the Commanders yesterday. They did, and they look they look really good. <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens do. They look like a, a little bit more than a contender. They are not a pretender, but they got to win. They got to learn how to win the big games too. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Uh, off day for the kids today. Because of uh, the holiday. What's the holiday? Uh, it's like uh, Indigenous. It used to be Columbus Day. Now it's like Indigenous Person Day or something what? like that. <laughs> it used to be Columbus Day. For years and years and years, it was Columbus Day, and then they, they changed it. Okay. So, I mean, are, is your, are you? Is yeah, your, I didn't know it was a holiday. I just a, know that it's parent-teacher conference day. Yeah. And that's what they that's what the teachers do all day. So if it's a holiday, wouldn't the teachers well, get out also? I mean, uh, the she didn't live under our roof, but the our, our daughter, the teacher, is off today. And oh. her kids are out today, so the... The Lubbock Cooper kids, I guess, have a holiday today. I think the LISD kids have a holiday today as well. Well, I'm not doubting the kids. Yeah. I'm, I'm, if it was truly a holiday, though, wouldn't teachers sure. be allowed Absolutely. to be off as well? Ab- absolutely. Right. Why? Yeah. And you're making just the... a, Or is that just a friendship thing? Uh, it's think a it... holiday only for children, not for kids? I think it's a... Or is it just a day off? It's a holiday just for the kids, not for the teachers. My sister calls this, these are the days I get paid to go to work. Uh, okay, well, uh, I think the LCPers are all, uh, th- everything's off yeah. today. So today's one of those days for them. So, Yeah, staff development days. Staff development days. Also known <laughs> as sitting in a meeting all day long. Right. Yeah, uh, pass. Yeah. Pass. <laughs> pass. <laughs> Do we need some of that around here? Do we need some staff? To, I don't Shoot really. Shoot him. <laughs> I don't. Just for bringing it up. I don't want it. Columbus Day is Monday, October the 14th of 2024, so yeah. that would be today. Right. I, it is also Indigenous Person Day. Indigenous it Person. That's how they That's how they kind of get away with that. They call it Indigenous Person Day okay. today. Yeah, well, it's... Columbus wasn't the nicest person. I still so wonder how you're supposed to celebrate Columbus Day. Just, Do you go to the Spice Island and get lost? I just wonder why it's a holiday for some and not for others. Well, oh. If you call it a holiday. I don't know. That's yeah. a great. That's a great point. I bet the banks are closed. I bet it's a bank holiday. Seems like all the, if, if all the teachers know that all the oh. teachers at Friendship that should go to LISD or to Lubbock Cooper and teach if uh, okay. if it's only a holiday for the kids and not the teachers. Okay. Well, here the, <laughs> I mean, the, if if it was only a holiday here for like the sales staff, but not the on air staff, I'd be like, man, I want to well, go to the difficult. sales staff. Yeah. <laughs> Except I'd rather put a. Fork in your eye? Yeah, pretty much. I got you. Uh, let's see. Banks are closed today. Post office as well. It's a federal and banking holiday. I'm still calling it Columbus Day. Um, let's see. My office closed today. All the banks in the mail closed today. 
Banks, post office closed today, so it's a federal holiday. Okay, well, so there you go. It's, it, you know, it's not an arm. It's not a holiday year, I can tell you that. Right? Last time I we checked. We have four. Yeah, we have four. That's right. <laughs> Christmas. Well, here, here's, New Year's. That was not my outrage, but here's my outrage. Okay, here's my outrage. Okay, wait. Um, so now I'm Googling. Uh, an indigenous person is a member of a distinct cultural and social group that has a historical connection to a specific region uh-huh. or set of natural resources. Native Americans. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, just use a lot of words there. <laughs> just use a lot of words to say what Jeff just yeah, said, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Just, yeah. Or Native Canadians. I mean, yeah. we could go that direction, too. Yeah. We're not anti-Canadian around here. No. All right, so here's my outrage. The uh, top 25 football poll came out, AP and coaches poll. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Team that's undefeated in the Big 12, 5-1 and one overall, and still is behind a team that they beat, okay? Arizona State still has more votes in the AP poll, 39 to Texas Tech's 18. And in the coaches poll – which is even worse because you'd think the coaches know what the hell's going on. 49 votes for Arizona State and nine for Texas Tech. But I think the thing that really has me irritated, and I know both these teams are undefeated, but neither one of them has played anybody. Army, Army's ranked. They're ranked 23rd. They beat Lehigh, Florida Atlantic, Rice, woo, Temple, Tulsa, and UAB. Okay. I think Texas Tech would probably have won by at least by as many points as Army did in any of those games, and yet Army is ranked twenty third. When 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 did when did we play the, the game? This f- fictional game was it the first week of the season? Because I'm not sure we would have beaten anybody but Abilene Christian the first week. Okay, okay. we're three and zero in the Big Twelve. We are. I'm not saying we're not. When did we play that game? Okay. It's been an uphill climb this Navy, year. Navy, meanwhile, nice. has has beaten Bucknell, Temple, Memphis, UAB, and Air Force. Whoop de doo. And they're five and zero. And Navy is ranked as well. They're twenty fifth. And maybe maybe this is maybe this is a little chip that the the Red Raiders will have on their shoulder. Hey, you still can't get ranked. You're five and one, you're undefeated in Big Twelve play after three weeks, but you still can't get ranked in the team that you beat. Arizona State is is more thought of than you. Now I'm really getting to the point where I feel like we're going to lose this weekend. <laughs> we just need to just keep winning, baby. Just keep winning. Are you are you irritated at no. all by this? No, nope. I didn't think you would be. Nope. I said it. I said it's just construction plans. I didn't. I'm not. I'm not hired Maybe. movers or, or. I'm not saying you're wrong to be bothered by it. Whatever. I'm bothered by it. Jeff, are you bothered by it? I'm not. I mean, I understand your. I understand why you are bothered. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with you that it is a little ridiculous, but it's a poll. If you win, you'll you'll fix the problem. I, I, I got you. I, I got you. There's only one poll that matters. Mm-hmm. It's the one at the end of the season. Yeah, I, I like our place in the Big Twelve standings better than I do any kind of poll. I I understand. Yeah, no. I'm, that's just what I'm worried about. Keep winning, and eventually you'll get in there. I I got it, I got it. I just you also didn't play Arizona State, did so they're fresh on the voters' minds. And yes, that's how stupid the voters are. If you don't play this week, they forget you exist, mm-hmm. which is why I don't care about this poll. I mean, I guess you could say for them, they just beat a top twenty team. Do you feel better or worse about the Red Raiders after this weekend? Same. I don't same. know that I got better or worse. Yeah, I think I feel the same. I think I feel the same. I think I think I feel like uh I think I feel like I mean if you go in and kind of do what you're supposed to do, I mean I think every game every game is winnable, okay, from here on out. I think there's got, some games are gonna be a little more competitive than others. Iowa State obviously. Um I don't think I'm as concerned about West Virginia as I maybe I was. Um I think the road games just because they're the road games. You've won. You've won one road game. Okay, that's big. It's big. But I think you know, 
still got to go out next week going out and playing at TCU. You, got the, the, you should have the crowd behind you. I mean, it would seem to me because those TCU people, they're going to give up. Those those people aren't going to go. They're going to go, hey, I'm, going to, I'm going to the lake. I'm going to the golf course. I'm going to the country club. I'm going over to Margie's house for coffee and donuts. You know? Oh, hang on. Wait, there's coffee and donuts as an option? I didn't know that was an option. I'm not. I'm not going to that game, Bud. You go to that game. You can go by yourself. You you, you think we'll have more Red Raider fans than there are? I think they will make fans. more no, more noise. Yes. Well, the ones that make the more noise, and the team is going to play better. But yeah, I feel I feel a little bit more nervous now than I did <laughs> heading into the weekend. I think West Virginia. I think more highly of them after seeing them again this weekend. Um, Again, I think BYU and Iowa State are really good teams. I think Colorado is going to be a really tough one for us too. And I realize the Army's quarterback is from Abernathy, and I'm rooting for that kid. I'm just saying. Yeah, if we played them, I would be so scared of us trying to stop the run. So scared. I think we win by three touchdowns. <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven twenty-four. Listen, we might. That doesn't mean we wouldn't be scared to stop in the run. <laughs> the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is brought to you by Connecticut of West Texas. All right, pretty simple question for you here today. How many teams in the Big 12... Do you feel like if they made the conference title game, you wouldn't be surprised? And then tell me who those teams are. Okay. You're talking about the Big 12 Correct. title game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I have eight. Eight? Eight. I think eight, eight are still in contention. Those eight are BYU, Iowa State, Texas Tech, Kansas State, Arizona State, Cincinnati, Colorado, West Virginia. Those eight, in my mind, still any of those eight could be in the Big 12 title game. The eight that I've eliminated are Arizona, UCF, Houston, Utah, TCU, Oklahoma State, Baylor, and Kansas. You would not be surprised to see Cincinnati in the conference championship. No. Okay. I would be. Um, well, I mean, how no, often I, do the I, three of us agree on anything? Nah. <laughs> All right. How many do I think could play in the Big 12 championship game? I think BYU could. Begrudgingly, I'm saying Iowa State could. I think Texas Tech could. I still think Kansas State can. And I hate to count out Utah because I had so much respect for them like with regards to a, as a program coming into the conference this year, but they have not lived up to that. But if they figure it out, I don't know that I would be shocked that they figure it out. So I'll say five with Utah. I think that's the end of my list. Okay, mine's three. BYU, Iowa State, Kansas State. Anybody else makes the Big 12 championship game, I'm going to be surprised. Do I feel like there are eight teams in contention? I think there's more in contention. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't count Utah out. Um, The other one and two teams, I I don't think Arizona is that good, so I would count them out. UCF, TCU, Houston, not happening. But So I I would say in contention, you could give me nine. Um, But... I would be surprised if it's anybody but BYU, Iowa State, or Kansas State that would make it in. I feel like the Red Raiders are going to miss it by, like, a game. Yeah. What's the What's the game like if they win Tech that you'll be like, oh. is it Iowa State or is it TCU? No, it'd probably be Iowa State. Yeah, for you. Yeah, because yeah, I don't think TC is that good. Okay. I I mean I I think Texas Tech is a good team. Mm-hmm. I do. I, I mean I think you could, I think you could end up with. I, I really think you could be nine and three. Mm-hmm. And be a really good team. I I just don't think you're as good as those other teams. Okay. Yeah. This this is not an indictment of negativity. No, no, Tech. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I mean I, again, started eight and four, dropped to six and six, and. I, I couldn't be more impressed the way Coach McGuire and his staff have kind of 
turn the, th- the thing around so quickly. Right at the ship, yeah, so it to just speak. feels like you're improving in every aspect of the game, mm-hmm. man. You know, being healthy is part of that. But um, I just look at BYU and Iowa State, and I feel like they're just a little bit better. Kansas State, same thing. Kansas State, though, I mean, it, they rely so heavily on Avery Johnson. And he's a bit erratic at times. And so mm-hmm. that's why K-State, you know, I mean, that's really – it was a big part of them losing that game to BYU. And he kept Colorado in the game at times the other night. But at the same time, um, he's he's pretty talented, and so so is the rest of that team. So those three, I think, are on a pedestal above the others right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and for uh, for Colorado – they are. Um, I just don't think they have enough defense. Okay. I just don't think they have enough defense, and I'm real interested to see what's going to happen here with Travis Hunter. See how how badly he was hurt in the game. I mean, they almost won that game without him in the second half. But if he's not in there, that's a difference maker. I mean, that's you're losing your defensive superstar and, and an offensive superstar. Here's here's the thing right now for right now for Colorado. You you could make the case. That the toughest game that they have left of their six is you, is us, is Texas Tech. Because they play at Arizona, they host Cincinnati, they come here, they take on Utah at home, they're at Kansas, and then they host Oklahoma State. Yeah, I'm not ready to bury Utah or Arizona yet, especially playing there. Me, me neither. Utah just got to get Cam Rising healthy. Yeah, I mean, you can make that case, Chuck. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. Yeah. I think you could make the case that if Utah's if Cam Rising is healthy at the time, it could be the home game against Utah. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, Syntex Hank says this: polls are beauty pageants, and Tech hasn't looked pretty winning. That's that's fair. Sitting in 121st overall defense makes us the ugly duckling. Uh, why yeah. why do you? We well, have to pull out facts, syntax, Hank. But you're—that's probably—that's probably true. No doubt you're improving, but mm-hmm. I mean that's that. You, when you look at BYU and you look at Iowa State, that, that's what they—they they, to me have more dominant defenses than you have. Yeah, and for uh, for BYU, I mean, it, it's not like they've got a whole lot left that you kind of go, eh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're on Cougar 97.3 this morning, I think you're you're feeling pretty pretty good because they have Oklahoma State, they're at UCF, they're at Utah, the Holy War there. That that'll be a, that'll be a big game. That that'll be their toughest game left. Kansas at Arizona State and Houston. Yeah. So, question on the chat line says, which team would you be surprised if they're not in the title game? And I think there's your answer right there. Is BYU? It's BYU. Yeah, that's your. I think it's BYU and the winner of the Kansas State Iowa State game there on November the thirtieth. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, extra title game, and the Red Raiders might finish, you know, right behind Kansas State or right there in fourth, maybe fifth. Okay, it is seven forty this morning here on the morning drive. The boom, boom, boom is next. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie Lint and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. It is great to have you with us today as we come to you from the First United Bank studio here in downtown Lubbock. The uh, thoughts and comments are still necessary. Uh, we like them. I mean, hearing from you uh, on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double T 97.3.com for that of the mobile app. I always know... That we have more tuned in than 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 sometimes it appears because there'll be people that want to agree with me, but the only time they really agree with me is when they see me one on one and they kind of whisper to me, "Hey, I agree with you," <laughs> <laughs> but they don't shout it from the mountaintop. Well, on the chat line, nobody knows who you are mm. unless you tell them. I know, but I mean, I'm just saying. I, Are you sure it's not just because you're face to face? They're polite and they tell you that. No, no. Usually it's they. Usually they tell me that. Do they hand it to you in an envelope? No. It always comes back to 
<laughs> always comes back to that. No, no, no. I just, I just know that there's times when I say things that might seem to be a little off-putting, so to speak, and um, then, you know, it always as it always turns out, as it always turns out, you know, somebody comes up to me and says, "I, I, I really agree with you." Oh, okay, well, thanks. Thanks for. Mm. Yeah. Okay, hang on. Did they say I kind of do I I oh. I really agree with you or is it I kind of agree? No, with it's you? usually it's very oh. emphatic. I agree with you. Okay, but they whisper it. <laughs> they whisper it. Yeah, they're not shouting because they don't want anybody else to know. <laughs> they don't want anybody else to know. That's they want I'm you not. to know. <laughs> they want me to know. They don't want anybody else to know. Okay? You know what that tells me. <laughs> what does that tell you? That they don't. While they will tell you. Mm -hmm. Listen, I agree with you, yeah. but don't tell anybody what I just said mm -hmm. because then I also sound like a crazy person. Yeah, I, I will. I will tell you that uh, one of our ministers yesterday she told me that uh, she was just going to wing it today. I thought, <laughs> okay, and the 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 head guy he thought it was pretty funny. Oh yeah, he thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she told me Are they uh, they're tuned in. Were they on loan from the Oklahoma church or what? No, huh? no. Oh, okay. No, the Oklahoma church. No. No, huh? Okay. No, not at all. I think Oklahomans tend to wing it a little bit more. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, huh? Yeah. No, huh? No. She, she was joking <laughs> based on my oh, okay. Based on my comment last week that, oh, hey, okay. did you ever just wing it? Yeah. You ever just wing it? She's like, well, I'm going to wing it today. <laughs> she was <coughs> regular. Yeah. And then I, I think it's great that people are polite to you and mm -hmm. to your face, and in mm -hmm. person they tell you that they agree with you. I think that's great. I had somebody. You know how they, you know, they tell you you should never lie. I, I believe that's one of the most inaccurate statements in the world. You should be polite sometimes mm -hmm. and lie, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, the the old the hundred year old million year old one is like if your wife says do, wife says do i look fat in these jeans or do do i look good in this right. okay Fantastic. even if even if she did you're mm. you're better off saying mm -hmm. you look great yeah. right you wouldn't you know wouldn't tell her that right you wouldn't so if somebody saw you in the store it wouldn't they don't you know, they don't want you don't want them to come up to you and be like Man, the other day you said the dumbest thing. I, I, you want them to come across you and be like, "Hey, Chuck, I love listening to you guys." I, I, I Just actually, be polite, right? I, I don't. I you don't, don't have to be completely honest. I don't now we all it. need people in our lives who are honest with us. Mm -hmm. But some guy you run across in the store is not that guy. Yeah. Well, I I, I don't mind. I don't mind. If, but generally, the people that I've come into face to face are you love us. Yeah, that's love exactly us. right. And, and I know they're lying. Yeah, that's another way of being polite. If they are, if they, man, uh, I love what you if, do. Man. If they saw one of us in the store and they thought we were a buffoon, yeah. you could just turn the corner and go somewhere and else. Like, you don't have to tell us. I don't really want to talk to that guy, so I'm just going to go down the aisle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so some some things that took place this past weekend. Uh, one, I think you're going to go, man, I really like that coach. And then the other one, you're going to go, that doesn't really surprise me. And I hate, I hate that Texas is making me kind of stick up for Baker Mayfield here a little bit because I still can't really root for him or support him. But what in the world was that at the end of the Texas-Oklahoma game where the Texas player takes a – Baker Mayfield jersey out to the middle of the field and plants the Texas flag in it. I mean, we're talking what? about we're talking about something eons ago. What? Yes, a Texas player took the took Baker Mayfield's flag out to the middle of the field his at the end flag? of the flag. Was he there? No. What kind of a flag does Baker Mayfield? No, no, his jersey took Baker's jersey and put and put the Texas flag in it. So he bought a Baker Mayfield jersey. Yeah. Had it on the sidelines of the UT side, it, took it out and, ha and planted the, it planted it like a flag. Yeah, rent free, brother. R that's what, that's ex rent free. That's exactly what Baker Mayfield said. He goes, "I love that they're they've been living rent free in my head. They've been living rent free in my head." Yeah, it's just other way around. He's living rent free. In he's their living head. rent free in my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rent so free. It's, it's just it's just it's just cr it's just crazy. I'm just he's going to go cash his million dollar check now. Right. <laughs> That's exactly both of them, oddly enough. But you know, hey, uh, it's a Texas linebacker Anthony Hill Jr. Uh, held up a ripped Baker Mayfield jersey following the Longhorns' dominant win because he had 
he had taken that jersey out to the middle of the field and put a Texas flag right through the middle of it. Him and a guy named Baron Sorrell. Neither one of those guys will probably ever play in the National Football League. This this goes back to 2017 was when Baker did that to Ohio State. 2017. It wasn't even to Texas. Do you think it was meant that it was the Baker jersey or just an Oklahoma jersey? He's holding. I, I, I know, I know, but I mean, it's just it's in an Oklahoma. Do you think it was just meant to be an Oklahoma football jersey? Uh, I, I think it's. I think it's incredibly dumb. And everything you guys just talked about with living rent free and all, all that good stuff. I just that's even if it was just a blank jersey, didn't have a number, right? And so yeah. here he was asked about this after the game. Here's what Hill said: I just felt like it was the right thing for me to do. I've seen all the stuff they posted last year, so I felt like it was right for me to just get a little touch of something on them. I had to post a little something to make the team and make us feel good. <laughs> he, so so maybe it was just happened to be a Baker Mayfield jersey. Make, because Baker Mayfield's not talking about Texas. This this screams to me of a kid who thought this is going to be cool on social media. Pro- probably, probably so. Yeah, I just... I just felt like it was the right thing for me to do. Really? It was the uh, right thing to do. How, how super classy, Holmes. <laughs> Gosh. Man. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.